So I sort of bought a quadcopter a few weeks ago and it's sort of ridiculously awesome. So I wanna share this with you guys today. I ended up buying the DJI Phantom 3 Professional Edition and I've wanted a quadcopter for several years now and I wanted to get one to get into doing aerial photography and video work. And in the past, they've been a little bit prohibitive to get into. The price on the quadcopters has been kind of high. You have to attach a camera to it. You have to figure out how you're gonna trigger that remotely. And you're gonna to have to figure out how you're gonna deal with camera shake and image stabilization because these things move around quite a bit in the air. DJI I have done a wonderful job of providing something that I think at a very fair price point gives you a lot for your money. You've got a great quadcopter that's very easy to fly and you have a very good camera in it. I want to give you a demo. I want to show you some footage and get into this a little bit, but I do want to say one thing before we get going about the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration. They announced in the U.S. two days ago, so on Monday, that they are going to now require everyone who is going to own and operate a drone, which this falls in the category of, to register your plane. And so basically what that means is you're going to go to their website starting December 21st. And I'll put a link to that in the show description. And before you fly, if you just bought one, you need to register it. And what they're going to do is they're going to assign you a number that needs to be displayed on the aircraft. And so it's really no different than a commercial airplane. Uh, for the first month, it's free. Then they're going to charge $5 of registration. But what this does is it allows the FAA to have a database of who is operating drones and who's flying. And it also hopefully provides a little bit of accountability and responsibility for pilots who are going to be flying these. And having said that, DJI have done a wonderful job of making something that is very easy to fly, extremely easy to fly. You can get in the air with little to no experience and start rolling pretty quickly. Having said that, you do still need to exercise common sense when you're using one of these. Um, and they do require responsibility because you're putting something into the air. Having said that, it is a very cool unit and I wanna show you what all is involved. I think first what I wanna do is roll a little bit of footage and what I did last weekend was I went back to my old neighborhood in Dallas called Deep Ellum and this is some footage that I shot so I'll go ahead and roll this and so you can see what the DJI is capable of doing. The Phantom 3 comes in two different editions. There is the Advanced Edition and the Professional Edition. And I ended up deciding to go with the Professional Edition, mainly when it came down to the camera. The Professional Edition uses a Sony Exmor sensor, which is capable of 4K output for video. And I wanted to max out the resolution, so that was a big deal to me. The Advanced version does not shoot 4K, and it uses a Panasonic sensor. It's still quite good, but I just wanted more resolution. They're both 12 megapixels. Um, if you're just shooting stills, it's probably not a big deal either way. The other thing for me that was a big deal, and you can see I have one on right here right now, is an ND filter. And the Professional Edition allows you to use filters with the lens. And that is really important because the lens is really good, but it is a 2.8 fixed aperture, which is pretty bright. And the camera will compensate when you're in the air on a sunny day by just using really high shutter speeds, which ends up giving a really interesting look to the video, but it's a really kind of cold and stiff look. And if you want a more film-like look, what you need to do is be able to slow down the shutter speed, which means you're going to need to put like an ND filter on the top or something to compensate so you can use that slower shutter speed. This will give you a little bit of motion blur when you're filming, and it makes things look a little more cinematic, and it's a look that I really wanted to go for. So for me, really, the the the, the, the way to go was with the professional edition. Uh, when you open the box, the quadcopters over here, you basically put in the battery, attach the propellers, and you're ready to go as soon as you're charged up. And then you use the remote control over here, which as you can see, is really simple to use. On the top, you have a power button, and then you have the return to home function, which I'll talk about in a second. It uses a smartphone or a tablet, uh, whichever you choose to use. The app is excellent. Um, it provides using this technology that they call LightBridge. Uh, you can actually see what the plane 
plane is seeing. It broadcasts video from the camera while you're recording and it broadcasts it over to you in uh, 720 output at uh, 60p, I believe. And it looks fantastic. And as long as you have good signal, um, it, it works fantastically. Um, when you take off, uh, what happens is the the quadcopter itself actually uses two different positioning systems. There's GPS, and what it does is it connects to, I think it's up to 16 or 18 different satellite points. So it is a very finite control over where you are in the sky, and the positioning is excellent. And when you take off, it does establish a home point, and so it takes the coordinates of where you are right now. So if anything were to happen and you needed to bring it back in an emergency, maybe you lost line of sight, what you do is in the software, you're going to predetermine the return to home altitude, and you want to make sure that's high enough not to hit anything. And then basically, if you hold, press and hold the um, uh, the return to home button, it will invoke the return to home function, which basically raises it up to that altitude, brings it home, and descends it and lands it. And it's also built into where if any time you're in flight, you lose contact with the quadcopter um, via the remote control. If all of a sudden they can't talk to one another, I think after five seconds, the helicopter goes into return to home function. So it's a really nice safeguard, and it's really nice to have GPS included in that. And there's a lot of functionality that you can get into, which is really more than this video would be appropriate for uh, with using GPS. There's a secondary positioning system. It uses what it calls VPS, which is a visual positioning system that uses sonar. And it's basically a good ground to ground um, uh, positioning system. So if GPS isn't available or if you're flying indoors um, or if you're doing you know video in a large room that's inside and you don't want to use GPS, um, it has a secondary positioning system as well. I want to give you a little demo of the Phantom and let's go ahead and put this in the air. I've already calibrated the, uh, the quadcopter. I've got the app set up. And so to get it into the air, what you do is you take both the thumb controllers, push them in towards the middle of the unit, towards the bottom, and that's going to start the propellers, as you can see. And I'm going to use the stick on the right, and this will provide um, vertical speed and thus lift off. So I'm going to go ahead and push that up, and we're going to go ahead and take off here. And you can see we are gaining some altitude. Right now we're at about 40 feet, and as I mentioned earlier, the maximum height on this is 400 feet, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll take it up. The left controller also controls the rotation of the aircraft, so as I'm rising, I'm gonna move that a little bit to the left there, slowly, and we'll get a nice pan of downtown there. And uh, everything's pretty smooth. You can see that the gimbal works great. We do have some wind here. We are at 400 feet and it's everything stays pretty steady. Um, it's not steady enough to do a time lapse because the aircraft will move inevitably, but little shake is pretty much taken care of. Uh, as I mentioned also on the controller, you do have um, control for the actual gimbal. So if I want to aim the camera down, I can turn the little knob on the left side and I can get change my viewpoint here and also there is a quick setting too so if I double click on the bottom you can uh, rotate the either straight down or you can click it again and go straight up and it's really nice everything is smooth and it couldn't be easier to deal with and we're just kind of hovering right over where I took off right now but we'll go ahead and give it a go. The right, or the controller on the right um, controls thrust of the airplane so I can either push it forward and we can start moving forward and you can see the props when you move forward into the frame on the video, but uh, not a big deal. And uh, we can also, if you move forward slower, you can control that a little bit. Um, when you're doing a shot, you're probably gonna be panning much slower anyway. I can also move to the left, if I just move this over to the left. And now we are moving to the left. So you have full control over this. I can move back to the right. And I can also move in reverse, so we can go away from the buildings here. So I'm going to go ahead and do some flying and you guys can see how this works.
Last thing I want to show you is if for some reason you have some trouble in the air and you need to return home, if you want to invoke the return home function, as I mentioned earlier, if you lose signal with the remote control, you get too far out of range. If it loses control for more than I believe it's three seconds or five seconds, it's going to automatically return home. So to do this, what I'm going to do is push the return home button twice. And so you can see it goes ahead and invokes it, and I know it's really bright out here and you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but you can cancel it if you want. What it does is it takes the quadcopter up to the predetermined altitude and starts the descent home, and it's beeping telling me it's gonna do that. So you wanna keep an eye on it uh, as it's coming in, and we're gonna see how accurate it is, because what it did is when we started up, it set a home point, and we'll see how accurate that is with the GPS as it actually comes down. And you still have control over the plane while it's descending. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it so it's facing us. So you'll be able to see us here. There we are. One of the things that's really nice, you're going to see it land here. And touchdown. We've got it. And it goes ahead and shuts itself off. Now, one of the things, you still have control while it's doing the return home function because, as I mentioned earlier, this thing can't actually see. And so you don't want to hit anything on the descent. And so it's really important to maintain that visual sight uh, while you're flying. The Phantom 3 is very easy to fly and it's really easy to get beautiful footage with. And if you're interested in getting into a system like this, I would recommend a few accessories. Uh, the first would be some kind of nice bag or carrying case. If you consider that most of your footage is going to be location based and you're going to be carrying it with you a lot, I would recommend something to transport that in to keep your quadcopter nice. Second thing I would recommend, extra batteries. The Phantom 3 only ships with one battery, and when you consider you only get 20 minutes of flight time, uh, that's not a lot. And so unless you really like landing and recharging batteries before you fly, um, I would recommend getting extra batteries to go with. Other than that, you have pretty much everything out of the box. Um, I would recommend too, you do get a micro SD card that it ships with, which is really cool. Most cameras don't include SD cards, uh, but the card is only 16 gigabytes. And so if you're shooting 4K video, that will fill up on you pretty quick. And so I would probably recommend a higher capacity card or two to go with that. And then as I mentioned earlier, I went with the professional version of this this because it has the ability one to shoot 4k but also it accepts um, filters for the lens and so that's really important and so all the footage you saw today I shot with an ND16 filter it's just a neutral density filter it lowers the light it allows you to use slower shutter speeds and that's what you want if you're gonna want that motion blur if you want that cinematic film look other than that I think it's a great unit um, and pretty much everything is out of the box with the exception of a few accessories so if you guys enjoyed this video please remember to like it and share it with your friends and as always subscribe to this channel so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos that we do here at The Art of Photography. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.